For 40 years in the late 1800s, the downtown neighborhoods of New York City underwent a tremendous building boom. Uh, this resulted in one of the world's greatest collections of cast iron architecture. Advancements in metals have made it possible for builders to leave the sort of thick, heavy construction of brick and stone masonry and move to a lighter, uh, more fluid style of uh, cast iron architecture. Uh, the building boom really only lasted about 40 years, uh, and after that, uh, the age of steel was ushered in, uh, and builders began to build the skyscrapers that New York is now known for. There were three main advantages to cast iron architecture. Uh, the first being uh, it was uh, fire resistant. Uh, this was incredibly important to merchants given that uh, there had been a great fire down on Pearl Street where they had originally been located and uh, that, had, uh, that had really wiped out a lot of their storefronts and, and part of the reason they were making the move up to Soho and Tribeca. The second advantage of cast iron architecture was the cost. It was much lower cost than building with stone. Uh, pieces were actually prefabricated, so builders could flip through a catalog. They could choose elements for the facade. They could choose columns for the interior. Uh, and also, these were much more heavily decorated. So um, decoration that would have been cost prohibitive with stone uh, could easily be done on a cast iron facade. The third advantage, and probably the most visible, is, uh, is actually the strength of the material. It allowed builders to really open up the facade, open up the interiors. Uh, they didn't have to rely on these big, heavy, thick columns to support the structure. Uh, they could just have some side supporting walls and thin but strong columns throughout the building. And same on the facade. Uh, it really enabled a lot of light to enter into the structure and, and made it very appealing for those who uh, worked there. As you walk around Soho and Tribeca, I encourage you to look up. These facades are simply gorgeous, and, uh, and when you take a look at them, there's just a few things that will be immediately recognizable to you. One of the first things you'll notice is that the facades can almost appear like a wall of glass. Uh, the cast iron you'll see here on this building on Broadway, uh, they were able to use these very thin columns, uh, which took them from you know, these dark, cramped spaces of the brick and stone architecture to a very well-lit space. Uh, this really just must have been an exhilarating change. Another thing to look for in these facades uh, is the balance between the horizontal and the vertical elements. Uh, as you'll see here in this building on Green Street, uh, the strong vertical columns are really balanced by the strength of the horizontal cornices that project on each floor. Finally, the third thing you should look for in these buildings is the decorative detail. For example, this building on 85 Leonard Street uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's actually attributed to the great cast iron innovator James Bogardus. Uh, not only does it have just these wonderful two-story uh, two uh, windowed arcades, uh, but if you look at the cornice, uh, it's, it's incredibly detailed. Uh, these details would have just been much too costly to have ever done in stone. The next time you're in New York City, I hope you take some time to visit Soho and Tribeca and uh, enjoy exploring the beautiful cast iron facades that the neighborhoods have to offer.